what we're going to do is we're going to use parts of speech tagging as our motivating example for um, looking at hidden Markov models. And in parts of speech tagging, the problem is basically the following. You're given a sentence like this. This is a simple sentence. And what you want to do is identify the parts of speech or the syntactic category for each word in that sentence. So this would be your input and then the output would be something like this where you've marked that this is a determiner, is is a verb, a uh is a determiner, simple is an adjective, and the noun is sentence. Okay, and that's the idea behind part of speech tagging. There are different ways in which you can tag um, um, parts of speech categories. So you need to define or decide on a specific convention that you're going to use, a specific tag set that you're going to use. And um, it depends a little bit on the application, what, what type of tag set um, you will use. And this, this is a tag set from, from Google, you can go and read the paper, where they tried and captured a lot of languages um, and basically the syntactic categories for several different languages using this specific tag set. You can read through this so you have things like verbs, eat, ate, eats, nouns, home, mica. Um, so proper nouns for instance in this specific tag set is grouped just with nouns so you don't label proper nouns separately. Um, you've got pronouns, are you, your, he, they, um, adjectives, you know, bigger, wildest, adverbs, quickly, faster, fastest, adpositions, which are prepositions and postpositions of, in, by, under, conjunctions and or but, determiners, uh, and the, this, and you can go on, cardinal numbers and so on. And um, with this specific tag set, it, is, it actually covers quite a few uh, languages that can be tagged in this way. And most languages would actually have these um, categories. Uh, except for determiners, um, so in Mandarin, I think, you don't actually have determiners. So you don't have a, uh, and the, and this. And it basically gets inferred from the context. Um, so that would be maybe an example of one language which, where you would just never have this tag in the, in the corpus. Like in many things with natural language processing, parts of speech tagging is hard, okay? And there are two ways in which things are hard with um, language often. The one is ambiguity, where, for instance, you can have a glass of water where, yeah, water is a noun, um, but in other cases, water can be a verb, so I've watered the plants. Okay, so that ambiguity, if I just gave you the word water, you won't know which part of speech this is, because in, in isolation, you can't actually figure it out. Lie is another example, wind. A mighty wind. The other problem is one that we've come across several times already, which is sparsity, where you might have to tag words that you've never seen before. You might also have to tag words um, for which you've never seen a word tag pair in your, in your training data. Let me rephrase that a little bit. Just because you've got a particular word which you've never seen as a noun, doesn't mean that it can never, ever, ever be used as a noun. And we saw when we looked at language modeling that you can deal with those cases by doing things like smoothing, you know, regularization, discounting, those things. And you would have to do something similar here with parts of speech tagging. Okay, now we're using parts of speech tagging as a way to look at hidden Markov models. And to bridge that gap, gap, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a story. Okay, don't get excited because it's a really boring story, okay? And it's called a, a generative story. So a generative story is basically a little story that you tell with probabilities. So you're going to roll a little dice and from that you're going to explain to me how you generate data. Okay? And the cool thing about the generative story is if you write it down properly and you tell the story the right way, then you've actually implicitly defined a proper probabilistic model. Okay? And it's really just a story that tells you how to generate data from a model. So I will tell you a generative story for um, generating words where we know something about the part of speech categories underneath it. Maybe I should just write here a generative story. A long, long time ago in a galaxy far away, we had a generative story. So the story goes like this. Uh, we start and you generate the start of a sentence. Okay, very boring start to the story. 
Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to repeat the following steps. The first step that you're going to do is you're going to choose a tag, something like a noun, a determiner, a verb, based on the previous tag. Okay, so based on what came before it. So when I start the story, the previous tag is the start of sentence symbol. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample a new tag given that the previous tag was the start of the sentence. Let's skip this step for now. Um, then what I'm going to do is, given that I've sampled the specific tag, um, I know the specific tag, I'm going to sample a word given that I have that specific part of speech category. Then I'm going to go out and I'm going to come back in. Now I'm going to sample a new tag given the previous one that I've sampled. Given that new sample tag, I'm going to generate another word. Okay? And I'm going to dunk, 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 go on like this until I sample a tag called this thing, which is the end of sentence. And then I've stopped. And what I've just told you is a little story for how, how to generate sentences in a language. But yeah, what do I need to run this thing? Let's say I've implemented this in Python and I actually ask you generate sentences following this little probabilistic model, following this generative story. What are the two things that you need? So maybe we need more than two things, okay? I will need to know the words in my language and let me spoil it for you. I need to know what different parts of speech there is. Okay, cool. So I need to know those two things. Okay, and what else do I need? The probabilities. Exactly, <laughs> you need the probabilities, that's right. So when I get to this step, I need to know what is the probability of going to a verb given that the previous step was a noun. Okay, that's exactly right. That's what I need um, for this step as an example. Okay, and for this step, I need to know the probability of, for example, the word water given that I've sampled in the previous step a verb. And if I have all of these probabilities and I give it to you beforehand in big tables, then you guys should be able to write a Python script that generates sentences from this little generative story. Nod. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, actually what I've written down here is a hidden Markov model. Well, this is one example of a hidden Markov model. Here's an example of a, a sentence that I generated from this hidden Markov model. So I start off and without rolling any dice, without any probabilities, I start the sentence, okay? Sorry for sniffing. If I leak from my face, just tell me. So I start with the start of a sentence, okay? And then what I do is I sample my first tag, given that the previous tag was the start of a sentence. Okay? And in this case, I sample the terminer. And then what I do, I sample my first signal, given that I sampled a determiner in, that first, in this first time step. So I go here, I sample this, boom, and then I sample this. Then I go back out here and I say, okay, well, given that my previous thing was a determiner, now I'm going to sample my second tag given that the previous one was a determiner so then I sample the noun there okay and then from that state I'm going to sample my word given that I'm in a noun okay and I continue in this way tung, 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 until I sample the stop symbol and then I've generated my little sentence I've drawn this out a little bit to look like a probabilistic graphical model where these arrows indicate um, conditional, conditional probabilities. And I'll unpack that in a second. Another way that hidden Markov models are often represented are with state diagrams. Okay, so here's a state diagram for the same generative story that we looked at before. So what you would do here is um, each of the parts of speech categories would be a state. Okay, so you would have determiners and nouns and verbs. Okay. And if I'm generating a sentence, I'm moving around in the, on this state diagram, in this finite state machine. So this diagram, for instance, this little edge here, from start of sentence to verb, that captures the probability of going to a verb, given that I was in start of sentence in the time step before. So that would govern that probability. Here we've got the probability of determiner, given that you've got a start of sentence, here we've got noun, given that you're at the start of sentence. So you start in this state, and then you roll a dice that tells you you're going to verb, determiner, or noun. 
if I jump to a determiner, okay, then I s sit in this state. And what happens? The moment I enter that state, I'm going to output something. Okay? And that thing that I'm outputting, that's the word. So for instance, I can output the um, word a, uh, or something like that. Given the probability of the word a, uh, given that I'm in the state determiner. Okay? You will have also a probability for the word the, given that I'm in the determiner, and the probability for the word cat, given that I'm in the determiner, uh, in the determiner state. And according to that probability, I'm going to sample a word and I'm going to kick that out. Now I'm in this state, and then I ask myself, okay, cool, where do I go next? And what you do then is you look at all the outgoing arrows out of the terminal, you roll a dice, and according to that, you might move to verb, okay? And you might, and then the moment you enter verb, you output another word, okay? Then later on, I might move to noun, and then I output the word based on, um, on the probability distribution associated with that specific state, okay? And so the question is, if I have a very long sentence, basically, how do I, how am I moving through this um, state diagram in order to generate that sentence? Sorry, this should be noun. Check if I'm right. This should be noun. Is it now consistent? That's okay, noun. Yes. The important thing is associated with this state, there's one probability distribution over all the words in my language. Okay. So if there's hundred words then I have a, a distribution over a hundred things they sum to one okay and when I'm in that state I roll a hundred sided dice and according to the probabilities associated with that state I will grab one of the words and there's another distribution associated with the terminal again when we have if we have a hundred words that's again a, a distribution over a hundred things but the probabilities are obviously different from the hundred things that we have here what makes this uh, a hidden Markov model is the fact that normally what happens is I just give you a sentence, but I don't tell you which sequence of states are you going through in order to generate that sequence. Okay? And we actually need to infer that sequence. And that's one task with the hidden Markov model. Is I give you a sentence, and if you know all these probabilities, I basically ask you, how do you move through the state diagram if that's my sentence according to these um, probabilities and that's why it's called a hidden Markov model because we don't um, know the tags right we're just given the, the the sentence that's very often the case what makes it a Markov model is exactly what you guys have been hinting at already is the fact that when I'm doing a step I don't have to look back all the way to the start in order to figure out what to do now in other words when I'm in this state and I want to generate a word I don't have to know that I, oh, in three steps before I was in determiner and then I went to verb and then I went to noun. The only thing I need to know in order to figure out which word to generate now is that I'm currently in this state. Similarly, when I'm moving from one state to another, I don't have to know the whole sequence that I went through to get to this point. The only thing I need to know is I'm currently in verb, okay, and where do I go next given that I'm in verb, okay, so I don't have to look back through my whole history and that's what makes it a Markov model. Markov models means if, if, if we make a Markov assumption it basically means that we only need to look back um, a finite number of steps into the history in order to figure out what to do now. Is everyone happy with the kind of the bigger picture of what a hidden Markov model is in the context of part of speech tagging? Okay. <laughs>